Welcome to everyone who is joining us. We are letting you in a few minutes early behind the scenes here with Regina. We're very excited to have you today. Welcome everybody. <laughs> Hi, I'm Regina. And thank you so much, Stephanie, for You're making so this welcome. happen. I really, so really happy. appreciate it. So Regina, I think on that note, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to talk to everybody here in Zoom, and then we'll post this video on Facebook. So I think we've already kind of given our introductions, but yes. let me say once again, welcome, and thank you all so much for being here with us today. We're so excited to have this tour of the Louis Armstrong House with Regina Bain, who is a two-time graduate of Yale, and I know she was just giving you a little of her background. And like she said, we did do an interview earlier this week on Instagram that is available on Vimeo, so we'll make sure that you have that link if you'd like to see that video. And today we're really excited to be live on location. Yale Alumni <laughs> Live <laughs> is very exciting. Yale mm -hmm. Alumni Live is a program of the regional clubs team at the YAA. And my name is Stephanie and I'll be your host slash facilitator since Regina is really the star of our show today. So we're partners, we're partners. <laughs> without further ado, Regina, I am going to turn it over to you. But to kick things off, we did get a question in advance, which I thought would be a great way for us to start this tour of the house itself. And one alum, I think it was, wrote in and said, what do you think is the social relevance of, the, of Louis Armstrong, of the Louis Armstrong House Museum to the world today? So tell us what you think and then show us around that amazing property. So Louis Armstrong was born in New Orleans in 1901. He was the first black musical mega star and he paved the way for contemporary, all the contemporary musicians who are here today. He was one of the first to step forward from the band and to be featured um, as a musician in front of the band because he was so excellent. He had such musical genius and prowess and skill on the trumpet. And the things that he were doing, no one else was doing. And the public was enamored and they wanted to hear him. And so he stepped forward. And that paved the way, not only through the, his technical facility, but his ability to perform and to be in front, of a, in front of the band and with the public and as an entertainer. And so that led the way for all the contemporary musicians who have come, whether they are in the jazz tradition or not. And so that's why Lewis is so ex extremely significant. He made music for five decades, for over five decades. He um, was magnificent. And all of this is in the context of the United States. So in the 13th Amendment abolished slavery, 1860s. The 14th, 15th Amendment um, had other protections for Black Americans, but those protections were not there often, including in New Orleans when Plessy, a man named Plessy, a Creole man, sat down on a train um, and was told he could not be there and was arrested. And that case went all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court of that time in the late 1890s said, he had violated not only the law, but the law of the land and the law of nature. And so it's in that context that Louis Armstrong was born in 1901. And it is in that context that he grew up from extreme poverty, from no running water inside to become the mega star that he became and to become beloved by so many people around this country and around the world when many Black people were not. And so that is his social significance for me and I think for many people. And I'm so honored, I'm so honored to be in that legacy. And I'm glad to welcome you all into his home. Thank you so much, Regina. So I know that you prepared an excellent tour for us today. So whenever you're ready to move throughout the house and show us the special spaces. Excellent. So this is the house. We are in Queens, Corona, Queens. So Lewis grew up in New Orleans, but he lived many decades here in Corona, Queens in New York. And he lived here with his wife, Lucille. 
So they bought this house, I believe in 19, well, she bought this house in 1943. Lewis, musician, was on the road 300 days out of the year. And Lucille, who was a dancer at the Cotton Club, um, wanted a home. And so she bought this home and said, Lewis, when you come back from your road, you come to this address because this is where we live now. And this is where they made their life and stayed here. No one else has lived in this home since they passed. Lewis in 71 and Lucille, I believe in 73. So welcome, welcome home. So it's just me and you. That's why I don't have my, app, my mask on, um, but we can be here at home. So this is our entryway. This is the door. And I love just the door and the door handle and this beautiful color that we have when we enter inside of the house. It is multi-level and we are coming down the front hallway and taking a turn to come into the living room. This is Lewis and Lucille's living room preserved as it was when Lucille passed and as they lived here. It's such a special space. And it's a space that I've come to know. So I'm gonna take you through a couple of the, the pieces um, so that you can have a closer look. One of the pieces that we're gonna look at are the paintings. So, Many people loved Louis Armstrong and wanted to paint him. And this is one of those paintings. Also in the house is artwork. Those traveled all over the world and collected artwork, including these Moroccan inspired doors. And they're here for us to look at. They're absolutely gorgeous. So again, this home was mostly um, due to Lucille, his wife. And I wanna show you a picture of Lucille. She's special to me. So this, if I can get her, this is Lucille. She's swathed in, I'm gonna say a blue dress. Well, I believe one of her favorite colors was blue. Again, a cotton club dancer. And I love their love, that they helped each other build a life here. And they were deeply involved in the community of Corona Queens. Whenever Lewis came home, where the tour bus pulled up in front of this house, all the kids would come out and meet him and he would invite them into his home. Now remember, he is a mega star at this point. He is uh, on all the TV shows. He was in 30 movies, oh, maybe over 30 movies. He's a star. And when he comes home, he says, come in, come on over, watch our TV. That's who he was in this community. And this is the space where they would come and live. And this is also the space where he made music. So this is his piano. And people would come over. Lewis liked to have, and Lucia liked to pe have people over. Um, and often there would be music. And often there would be music that's recorded. So in addition to this home, there are the archives. Lewis kept things for, from his life because he wanted to tell his life story on his own terms. And so in our archives, which are now housed at Queens College and are about to be housed across the street, more on that later, there are 60,000 items from Louis, from Louis Armstrong's life that are archived and that are available for the public to come, to see, to engage with, to learn from. And that's all because Louis Armstrong was an archivist and kept things from his life. Included in those archives are reel-to-reel -reel tapes. We're gonna see where he made some of those reel-to-reel -reel tapes later. But basically, 
he would just turn on a recorder <laughs> in his home and whoever was here, whatever was happening, it was recorded. So all the parties, some even arguments between Lewis and Lucille, all recorded and definitely music. So this is the living room. Regina, and we I'm have one quick question. Yes. I'm sorry, before yes. you move on, there was a question about something that you pointed out, and I think it might have been at the beginning. A question was uh, something that you had pointed out, the Tony Bennett. Does that ring any bells, Tony Bennett? Oh, so that that is upstairs. There, there are multiple um, uh, paintings of Louis Armstrong, and so this painting was not done by Tony Bennett. I don't believe, I don't believe. People out there who know, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but there is one upstairs who definitely, that definitely was, so we'll get there. Thank you very much. And as you'd like to move on, we are ready to go with you. Okay, great. So we are going to head down the hall and head to the bathroom. So this bathroom is glorious. It is mirrored walls and ceilings. It is gold plated. It is marble. And it is amazing. And this was featured in a magazine in 1971. And uh, there's a famous picture where Louis Armstrong is in his robe in this bathroom. And remember, this is a man who grew up in New Orleans without this. And so having this and having it be majestic is special. So we're gonna move through the dining room. I wanna show you this piece of art. So, I, the thing that I love about this is that there is a musician and there is a dancer. And so for me, this represents Louis and Lucille's love. Now we're going to head into the kitchen. It's awesome. Regina, as you're walking into the kitchen, can you tell us where did Lucille and Louis, did he, did they make any changes to the home? Did they do these renovations? Did they do a lot of the decorating themselves? Are you still there? Oh, yep, yeah, we're here. Did we lose okay. you for a minute? This is the beautiful part of Zoom and live, right? So, yes. <laughs> no, I'm just curious about the bathroom because it is so ornate. I'm assuming that they decorated it themselves or were, was it like that when it wasn't like that when they moved in was it that was something that they added special to the house perhaps so lucille is all over this home and she made this home what it is and so she had very specific um tastes including in wallpaper so wallpaper is all throughout not only on the walls but uh sometimes on the curtains on the blinds. This wallpaper is actually very textured. I'm not sure if you can make that out, but Will's hand is all throughout. We're losing you just a little bit, Regina. Okay. Oh, there you are. Yay. Oh, hello. There's a little bit of a lag, but that's okay. I'm sure that you'll bounce back any minute. <laughs> okay. So I'll try it here um, and then we'll go from there. So okay. this home, I believe, was uh, built around 1901. I may have, I may be off for, for a few years around 1901. Um, and they bought it in the 1940s. Okay. I'm going to try and have us go upstairs. We're going to see how it works. Let me know if we can make it. If not, we'll let it go. go. Okay. Well, so far so good. And we have one other question as you're walking, which I do think you um, have built into the tour. So if this is something for later, we can go back to it. But there is a question of, does the house have a garden? And can you, when maybe you get to a special location, tell us a little bit about Lucille and Lewis's hobbies, if they had any special hobbies that you haven't yet told us about? 
Got it. So I'm making my way up the stairs. Hopefully you can still see what I'm seeing. We can see you. Yes. I will let you know. Just keep going and I'll let you know if we lose you again. Thank you, Regina, okay. for, for hanging in there. Awesome. So we're now upstairs. And can you see the picture of Lucille? Yes, we sure can. And so I am, and I'm, I appreciate Lucille and her touch in the home. Are you all still here? Sure are, we got you. Okay, so we are going into the den. And this is a special place because this is kind of like the man cave. It is the, the place where Lewis came to work, to relax, to write. He was a musician, a, played the trumpet. But in addition to that, he was an all around artist. He was an amazing vocalist, special, unique. He was also a collage artist, and he was also an early adopter of technology. He was an innovator. And some of his collage art um, is on his reel-to-reel -reel tape covers. So, This is some of the reel-to-reel -reel tapes that he made. And there are many, many different collages of his art that are in the archives. So if you're ever in Queens and you wanna come by, actually, if you wanna to go to our website, lewisarmstronghouse.org and click on our virtual tours, that's my home. You can see many of the items in our archives in storytelling form that have been put up by our director um, of the archives, Ricky Riccardi. So you can check them out there, but you can also check them out when we're able to in person, when you come home to Queens. So I'm gonna take us over to the reel-to-reel -reel tapes, the record player, so again, Louis Armstrong was an early adopter of technology. Anything that is not yet released in terms of musical, te musical technology right now, Louis Armstrong would have had it and used it and brought it with him on his travels. He carried a typewriter with him from uh, as early as I believe the 20s because he wanted to write letters and he wanted to write his story. He corresponded with many, many people. And so many people have the story of, of writing Louis Armstrong a letter and having him return it and write him back. And that's part of what made him special is he actually wanted to reach out and correspond with his fans in a really personal and intimate way. And it made people love him. And he also wanted to just write about his life. So he had his typewriter. He had, I think, a, 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 record, a handheld recorder. He was, had one of the earliest cassette tape decks back in the day when the cassettes were cutting edge. Um, and so we are looking to partner with cutting edge sound engineers sound technology to bring them into the house because that's what Louis Armstrong would do. Regina, we have another question about whether or not the typewriter is in the house. You know what? I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to ask the folks who are um, on staff here. So there's an amazing staff that makes up this house. I mentioned Ricky, there's also Adriana and Highland and Junior and, uh, um, and Pedro and many, many more who helped to make all of this happen. And they are the experts. Um, and I'm new, to, I'm new to the team, so I have to learn more. Behind me, this I think is what you were thinking of. This is 
Tony Bennett's painting. I'm gonna go close so you can see it. Okay. And it's signed. And it has that beautiful smile that is so iconic and was made for him because there was a recognition between these two master musicians of Louis Armstrong's mastery and what he meant to the world. So I, I'm not sure how we're doing on time. There's one last thing I wanted to show you. Is that all right, Stephanie? Absolutely, we'd love to see it. Okay, so we're not gonna be able to get to every room in the house, but I wanted to take you to some place that most people don't get to see when they're on the tour. So we're gonna see how Wi-Fi holds up. It might hold up better because we're gonna go outside. So we are going out on the deck. All right. So someone asked if there was a garden. And there is indeed a garden. So there used to be a home next to this home, but it went up for sale and Louis and Lucille bought it and let it go and built a beautiful Japanese style garden. So I'm not sure if you could see it. But it's where we host concerts, where we have kids come when we're able to gather and they come into our garden and hear music and learn about jazz and Louis Armstrong. And it's where in, during the day, sometimes people just come and sit and eat. And it's really peaceful and beautiful. There's a pond, it's glorious. Then I wanna show you the other parts of the Louis Armstrong House Museum. So the crown jewel of the museum is the home, the home that we've just been in. But now we're growing. So right next door is Selma's. Selma was a friend of Louis and Lucille. And this is her home. And when she passed, she left it to the estate, to the, to the museum, and wanted it to be in service of Louis Armstrong's legacy. And so now we are going to update it and to make it the offices um, and have a, a kitchen that can um, serve for events. Um, and it's gonna be really special. And then across the street, we're building something called the Louis Armstrong Education Center. And I'm not sure if you can see the construction. Hopefully you can see it. It's going to be two levels. The, the lower level is gonna house a new state of the art exhibit that's curated by Jason Moran, amazing jazz pianist. It's going to have a 75 seat theater in the back uh, where we can have artists from around the world from down the block and community programs. And the archives are going to come from Queens College, our amazing partner, and be here. We're so lucky. We have amazing partners in Queens College and Louis Armstrong Educational Foundation and in so many individuals who have really supported us throughout the years. So we're thankful for that. So that's the house. Welcome home, you all. Regina, it is, it's so amazing to be transported literally to Queens, New York, when so many of us are at a distance or unable to travel. It's absolutely fantastic. I love seeing the neighbors. I really feel like I'm in New York City when I see the neighbors and the style of the homes. It's absolutely fantastic. We did get another question about the study, the, the space in the home, the study. Were any performances rec uh, recorded in the study? So I'll go back in so you can see uh, performances from Louis Armstrong. 
I'm not sure if there were performances recorded, but there were definitely music recorded. And in the archives, there are tapes of him warming up. And actually, we have something called a new initiative. Close the door right quick. Okay. There's a new initiative that we're starting at the museum, and it's called Armstrong Now. And it's where we're going to work with contemporary artists who are in the legacy of Louis Armstrong, but they may not know it yet, and have them come and research in the home, into the museum, and learn about Louis Armstrong, and then respond by creating new work. And one of those artists, Christian Sands, pianist, um, and uh, created a work that was in response to Louis Armstrong warming up. So Louis Armstrong is warming up on trumpet, and he is responding on piano, and there's a gorgeous dancer who's dancing in this space. Absolutely stunning. I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. Please feel free to put any questions or comments into the chat. I know we have another one. Regina, Carolina, I, or Carolina, not sure, Carolina, I'm guessing, says that she's so much appreciated your tour. She's always wanted to visit and never had the chance. So thank you so much. And I, of course, echo those things. This is absolutely amazing. Thank you, Regina. Thank you all. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, everyone, for coming home with us for a little while. And we hope you'll come back. Come back to our website, lewisarmstronghouse.org come back in person when we're able to gather again. And definitely come back to Armstrong Now and to the programming that we are going to have every week because we're here for you. And if there's anyone who's listening from uh, around the world um, who's there in another country, know that we are excited because one of the opportunities that has been pre presented to us as we had to pivot and pirouette um, in response to the pandemic is now that we have a virtual presence, we have a video presence, and we want to continue that. And we want to partner with institutions around the world to bring Louis Armstrong back because he was a global ambassador. So he's probably been there before, yeah. but to bring him back through our programming and to partner with, it, with institutions to learn about their cultural icons and bring them here. So if you're from around the world, we wanna hear from you and more to come. Thank you so much, Regina. Are there other videos, uh, tours of the house that people can find at, on the website? Yes, if you head to lewisarmstronghouse.org, you can also head to our Facebook page and our Instagram and subscribe. Um, and there, there, we'll be releasing the Armstrong Now videos on those platforms every week. So if you subscribe there um, and subscribe to our newsletter, um, you'll find it there. But also on our YouTube page, there are a series of videos uh, and tours. I believe there are three tours total. And every tour is a little bit different because it depends on the individual who's telling the story. Um, and the piece of the Louis Armstrong story is so expansive. So the pieces of the story that they focus on is dependent on that individual. So check it out. Check all those out. This has been so special. Thank you so much, Regina. And did you say when the, when the construction will be completed on your expansion? So the goal, this is construction. Yes, Not of course. all the wood, all the fingers crossed. All the caveats in parentheses. All the caveats. <laughs> uh, but the goal is for the construction to be completed in the spring of 2021. So this wow. has been 15 years in the making and we are months away. And that's really exciting. There's work to be done once they give us the keys. We have to outfit it. We have to put, get the furniture. We have to move things from the archives. But it's possible that for Louis Armstrong's birthdays, he has two, look that up, we could be in that space and be celebrating him. Um, so more to come on that. Well, thank you again, Regina, and thank you everyone for watching and sticking with us today. I apologize about the technical difficulties. I feel like Zoom and Facebook and everybody just needs a break. So hopefully <laughs> this was a nice break for all of you today, midday, to join us at the Louis Armstrong House Museum in Queens. 
It's been an absolute pleasure. This video will be posted on the Yale Alumni Facebook group and also on the Yale Alumni Vimeo, so you can watch it again, but you can definitely find more information on the museum's website. And you can see Regina another time, hopefully here again with Yale alumni in the future. So thank you all so much. It's been a pleasure. Have a great day, everybody. And thank you again, Regina. You're amazing. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.